Hey, Ant fans! So, I know I promised you that I would tell you the story of what happened to my first colony. So, here's a story all about how my ants got flipped, turned upside down. Yeah, anyways. Um, <laughs> no, but, but really, this is what happened. Um, my husband is amazing, and he's so supportive of my ant keeping hobby. Uh, and he actually built me a shelf for my ants, which was amazing. And while I was at work, he was going to transfer my ants from the countertop in the kitchen. They were on a towel and they had another towel um, on top of them just to keep them in the dark. And he didn't want to disturb them, so he kept the towels on them. They were actually in a test tube connected to a, a little mini Ants Canada Outworld. So he transferred them over, picked them up with the towel, kept the towel over them so he couldn't see them, and then put them on the shelf. And when he lifted up the towel after they were on the shelf, he saw the Ants Canada Outworld, but he didn't see the test tube. He realized that the test tube was no longer connected. And so he um, was startled and uh, was concerned. So he lifted up the towel to see, you know, where the test tube was, and it actually flung the test tube. It flew, crashed, hit the ground, bounced around like crazy. I have no idea how there was as much damage as there was, but um, it was a bloody massacre. And so when he called me, I thought honestly, I thought he lost a, a limb. I thought he was like, or in an accident, something terrible had happened. You could hear in his voice that something horrible had happened um, because he knew how much I, he knew how much I, I was in love with them. Myra is her name and she had about 15 workers or so and I would just sit up for hours at night and watch them as they would like help each other, you know, um, um, it closed out of their cocoons and uh, yeah, it was really sad because it turned out uh, at least half of the um, colony died immediately. Myra had a giant gash in her abdomen and uh, we couldn't find uh, most of the brood. We looked everywhere on the floor and we couldn't really find most of it. Um, one of the ants actually, um, one of the girls was like paralyzed from the waist down, which was really sad. So yeah, so that's, that was really sad. So, um, and then Myra uh, died uh, the next morning. She was she she was gone. So I was devastated. I wasn't mad at John. I wasn't. I was just, you know, it was sad. It was an accident, and he was only being really sweet. And um, yeah, I was I was totally broken up. I I like I actually punched a hole in my bathroom door because I was super sad about it. Again, not mad at John, he knew this, and I kept repeating it even as I was like a blubbering mess, like I, I wasn't mad at him. I just get really attached to my aunt. <laughs> this was the first colony I'd had. Um, being here in California, I'd had one or two, two other queens that had small colonies in Indiana, but I really, at that point, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and uh, they didn't last very long. If you raise ants, you know, it's, it's a process. I mean, it's a long process, you know, from, from the time where you get the queen, whether she's fertile or not, is always up in the air. And then from the time it takes them to lay eggs and then get the larva, then you have pupa. That time frame before you get the first uh, workers can take a couple months. And summer had just finished, so there really was no hope of going back out and, um, you know, finding another queen at this point. I was gonna have to wait, um, you know, until next year. So, so yeah, and um, she was just doing so well. Myra was um, a um, Campanatus queen. When I found her, I found two queens. One was Myra. Um, the first one I found, though, was Angel. We were at an Airbnb with my family on vacation, and I watched Angel land on the patio and take her wings off, and that's why I named her Angel. So I caught her right away. I was so excited, did not expect to find another one because she just kind of landed in my lap. And then there was another one that came out of nowhere, and so I named her Myra. And it turned out Angel was a terrible mom, or maybe she was infertile. I can't decide. I don't know if she was just stressed and just kept eating her um, eggs, which she was doing. I, I don't know if those eggs were um, fertilized eggs or not, but I think they would develop into larvae. Um, but even so, um, supposedly, you can actually have ants develop, male uh, ants develop from unfertilized queens, which is super crazy if you didn't know that already. So anyways, um, after that tragedy, 
I had been keeping Angel, who had been um, producing no workers at all and who seemed to be just eating her eggs over and over again. They had the same exact life. Myra just wound up being an amazing, fertile, productive, wonderful mother. And Angel ended up just kind of being a dud of a queen. Um, but I kept her and I was, you know, and I would feed her and stuff because it'd been so long um, since I caught her. So after the tragedy, ultimately I ended up with about six or seven workers, one of whom was paralyzed from the waist down. Um, some brood, a little bit of brood, and in another tube, test tube, still, you know, away in the dark under my sink, uh, was Angel. And I was at a place where I knew both of them were not going to be successful, obviously, um, on their own. So um, Angel was not producing any workers, and I didn't know if she just needed help with the mothering part of it, or if she was just infertile or, or, or what, um, or if she was just always stressed out. Um, and then I had my, you know, workers now without a mother or without a queen um, who were ultimately just going to, to die, and um, that was going to be the end of it. So I decided to see if I could introduce Angel to Myra's workers um, to see if they couldn't all get along and maybe become one big happy family and maybe um, potentially the workers could help take over the mothering of uh, Angel's brood and um, maybe this could end up being, you know, sort of a happily ever after with Angel um, fostering Myra's children and, um, and then them helping uh, Angel to, to actually raise her own colony as well. So I, I took Myra, um, her body, and learning from other ant species where some queens will invade another um, ant colony, kill the queen, and like rub their scent, the queen's scent all over their body so that they can then impersonate the queen to then become the new queen of this colony, but then have this colony um, then raise its own um, species of, of, you know, species of ant. Um, anyways, so I, I took Myra's, um, body and I put it inside of Angel's test tube. And, um, I was really nervous about this because I did not want Angel to like eat her or anything because I don't think I could handle that. But what happened is, um, Angel immediately went over and just started very gently and very, uh, sweetly sort of kind of almost like kissing her and just, um, you know, very sweetly sort of like walking around her and touching her and just kind of checking her out. And she did that for a while, which I thought, okay, that's good. I mean, hopefully she's kind of, I don't know, getting some of her scent and stuff on her. And then I decided to chill everyone out, literally. I put them all in the uh, refrigerator um, for, how long did I do that? Maybe a couple of days, probably. And then I brought them back out I took Myra out of Angel's test tube, and then I hooked both test tubes on either end of the Ants Canada Outworld that actually um, was Myra's Ants Canada Outworld. So you'll see in the footage, um, there's still the, the dead workers. They, they were all dead in the test tube, and then the surviving workers had eventually just sort of put them out in the Outworld, and I hadn't, I hadn't picked them up yet. Um, but yeah, so you'll see that. So I had them both connected to the same Outworld, and I just waited for them to meet each other. And this is, this is what happened. Okay, so here are Myra's workers. Here are the casualties of the Great Fall. They've moved out into the outworld. And this is Angel. So I sped a lot of this up just um, for the sake of time, because I filmed a lot of this process. And here's a little worker. She's thinking about checking stuff out. The girl on her back is the one that's paralyzed. And here's the first pioneer to check stuff out. And she really spends a lot of time right there at the front, which is right where Myra's body was. And she seems pretty excited just sort of checking that area out. And then... Mm, I got nervous. Oh, Houston, we have contact. 
so this is looking good. They they honestly genuinely seem really excited to meet each other. Angel has been by herself now for months and months and months, so this is really the first contact she's had with any other being apart from her eggs and her larva. And she honestly just kind of, they went back and forth like that for a while, just kind of excited and checking stuff out, checking each other out. So, so far so good. Check it out, 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 check it out. 80 points to anyone who knows that reference. Here comes Angel, peeking out her doorway. Like, what the heck is going on out here? She's still super interested in this worker. Probably hungry. I'm just excited seeing another ant. A couple other girls are coming out. Got their antennas on alert. Like, what's happening out here? And there she meets somebody else. Now they're in investigation mode. Trying to figure out what the heck is over here. Like they've just discovered the secret entrance to some mysterious lair. And Angel's back. And it's feeding time, apparently. It's a good sign. I think. And here, literally, within minutes, they've already grabbed Angel's brood, snuck it right by her, and are just taking it back. Easy peasy. Like stealing candy from a baby. Mm, speaking of babies, where are we gonna put these babies? No, maybe over here. No, we're just gonna. How about. Look okay, it right there. And just like that. Immediately, everyone's excited to fuss over this new brood. And getting a closer look, I feel confident that Angel did in fact have larva that she's probably just been eating, which I thought already, I was pretty sure from all the other times I checked on her. I'm like, well, I think those are larvae, and you just keep eating them. Savage. So, everybody's just kind of getting to know each other, breaking out their icebreakers, cracking a few jokes, just to, you know, lighten the mood, break the tension. And of course, you know, puke in each other's mouths, as one does when you get to meet someone new for the first time. And Angel's making her way downtown. Walking fast, faces pass. Like that one. She's homebound. There she is. Everyone's so excited. Feels more like a reunion than a first time meeting. And I don't see any, like, aggressive behavior from anybody, so that's good. That's encouraging. And that poor paralyzed girl just wants to see what's going on. We'll call her Adea, because I might have made this a DD and d backstory, and that might be the name of the paralyzed sister. That's not weird, right? Well, shut up. It was cathartic for me. Anyway... So every time I check on them, everything seems to be going really well. Like one big happy family, everybody seems to love each other, care for each other.
There's Angel feeding Adea. The workers seem to be doing a really good job of taking care of all the brood. Oh, there's a random, like, half of an ant in there. Sorry about that. It's kind of gross. Ugh. But everyone else seems to be doing super well. So things actually went really well for a while. Angel was great to the other workers. The other workers seemed to love her. She did such a an amazing job um, being so gentle and caring. She did such a good job of caring for that, uh, the, the paralyzed worker and um, keeping that worker alive for a really long time um, just by, you know, caring for her and feeding her and everything. But eventually, Angel just, she just had a bad habit that, um, you know, came back. She eventually started eating um, Myra's uh, brood uh, along with her own brood. I mean, little, little by little, but she, you know, was eating the eggs, the larva. Uh, even, um, even when the workers were trying to help uh, a nanotic close, did she, um, yeah, she, she ate it. So, so, um, yeah, not successful ultimately in the way that I wanted it to be. Successful in that they all got along and they were one big happy family, but as far as creating any new workers or um, for any of the brood surviving, uh, it just didn't work out. And then um, over time, eventually everybody one by one uh, passed away. So that's what happened. But that was the experiment. The experiment worked. If Angel would have been any other fertile, non-cannibalistic queen, this would have worked, but she wasn't, so. so that's what happened. But anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, um, comment, uh, yeah, and I'll bring you more videos. I'm going to try to get time. got a lot of videos. I got a lot of editing to do. I have a lot of footage. So I got updates for Tinkerbell, um, my anting excursion to um, share with you guys. Yeah, and formicarium stuff to talk about. Um, so yeah, more videos are coming. So subscribe.